know the truth. some images of Sigma Octantis viewed from Sydney with some time-lapse photography and we'll be checking out some different angles of um, where these photos are taken from okay this one here is um, taken from the western side of the bridge and the north side of the harbour 
And as you can see, we're looking underneath there at the Sydney Opera House. And Sigma Octanus is uh, above it and a bit to the right. Okay, this one here, we're still on the west side of the bridge, north side of the harbour, but we're further up the harbour on the west side. Looking at Sigma Octanus. Now, this one here gets me. Now we're on the east side of the bridge, on the north side of the harbour, looking directly over at the Opera House, with Sigma Oct Octantis above and to the right of the Opera House. Now the angle of that is almost 90 degrees from this shot here. There's definitely some weird angles going on. Sigma Octantis, what's your angle? Yeah, it seems to be uh, turning up in all sorts of spots. Point the camera here and there it is. Point the camera there and there it is. Righto, so we're on Google Earth in Sydney. There's the Arbour Bridge and there's the Opera House. Right, so there's north here. East would be over here on the compass. So we're looking roughly about northeast. From the position I'm in here in Sydney looking at the Opera House. There's the little part of the Opera House at the back there. Take note of that. Alright, this next image I'm putting up has got to be the nail in the coffin for Sigma Octantis. How can it be? Sigma Octantis? In the northeast? Or are we looking at Polaris? We're looking more north than we are south here. If that were Polaris, we use her in trouble anyway. Cause uh, we shouldn't be seeing that from Sydney. According to you guys. For example, this is from Malaysia, trying to look at Polaris. And because Malaysia is a little bit up on the equator, you're gonna see that is Polaris, you know, right there in the middle of the screen and you are going to look it, you know, like it's in front of you because it's so far away that everything is up in the sky is going to trying to reach the, the horizon line. So when you see the stars uh, above the equator uh, and you pointing to the um, North Star, you can see clearly this tunnel tunnel effects based on perspective and I mean, for example, if I draw here, uh, if I if I trying to replicate the same kind of uh, perspective, you can see here this this will be Polaris based on this uh, real image, you know. So if I indeed at this right moment, if you are going to uh, move the camera, you're gonna have this kind of tunnel effects, you know, that if you are going to able to look up the southern hemisphere, you're gonna have the same, but inverted. Because it's this kind of tunnel effects that you can you can maybe see better, uh, you know, here. Uh, let me just uh, point in right. this situation. You you are looking like this. Uh, yes, Bob. Sorry. Oh, I was just saying, and Malaysia is about four degrees north latitude. So it's just yes. barely above the uh, equator. Exactly, exactly. I, I have here, if uh, this is Malaysia, right here, and this is the equator. So you are looking a uh, really uh, long way to look these stars, but you have that kind of tunnel. So if you compare with these uh, situations in the real life, uh, you know that the light is bending. We live in this kind of uh, atmospheric uh, conditions that uh, mimic like a little dome. You're gonna see, if you're looking uh, straight to the north, uh, you're gonna have the clockwise effects. And if you're looking in the other direction, because it's forming this kind of tunnel, you're gonna have the opposite um uh, rotation and you I, I think everyone see the p brain videos like uh the, the 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 this guy make a real good job but you can determine that that phenomena happen in the real life because you have the crepes the crep crepuscular and anti-crepuscular rays so that 
are tiny things based on real life that telling you, okay, this uh, light phenomena happened in the real life. It's not just based on, you know, some kind of uh, imaginary thing or, you know, uh, um, uh, maybe, no, sometimes are crepuscular, but sometimes not. No, that is what is happening in the real life. So we have that kind of situation. So if you are looking at that kind of perspective, you're going to have this kind of uh, phenomena. Whatever you are, it's not just because you are, you know, in the equator. It's whatever you're looking far away in the horizon. When you are, for example, uh, more on the north, in the center, you're going to have this kind of view, which, um, you know, where is you look in this kind of behavior based, for example, in Polaris, and uh, that is like, like if you are looking, you know, come closer to the south, you're gonna see this kind of behavior. This is from an, a camera from Antarctica. When you see this kind of picture, no one can believe that this camera is able to see the equator, the North Pole and the South Pole in the same image. Because this uh, this uh, this camera, it's uh, you know in a in a really small part of the Earth. So th th that you have that the camera with the lights, with the bending lights, and that kind of stuff behave in this way. That's it's why uh, this kind of th this type of time lapse you can everyone that make this kind of uh, time lapse always see this kind of behave of the light, no matter when, where they took right. this kind of uh, image. And uh, when you're trying to search something about the the, um, the southern uh, constellations, uh, the, the official, uh, sorry for the, 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 the advance going forward, uh, um, they, they tell us that, uh, that no, you know, it's, uh, it's like an imaginary point. That is why all the things are based on the crocs, uh, southern crocs, not on Octantis. For example, to you know to line up the things in the southern hemisphere, and uh, it has a lot of, of course, of you know things with occultist, uh, Jesuit, uh, all the names here in Argentina, all the stars, and, and you know all the time they are totally present, but. Uh, for me, it's something, you know, uh, when you ask, for example, uh, how to find the celestial pole, uh, they talking about there is no any bright stars that make the same behavior as the North Star. Uh, you must be take like a uh, imaginary point and, you know, always there, has, there is problems, <laughs> you know, there is any time the, the, you need to arrange a lot of things that call to imagination. Right. And, and I wonder I when, the, when the Southern Star was part of the Southern Cross, probably would have been in the past that they would have had a star there to travel by, but not one in the north. But I've never seen any story or written history of that. Yeah, even I, I, in, no, I don't even see uh, that. Uh, there are supposedly like uh, 12,000 years the North Star change. The next one is going to be Vega, Vega. But, you know, th we don't see any kind of gradient of that change n n where where is the transitions of, of, of all this kind of behavior in the past and you know because if there is a 12,000 years period you have changed you know a, like like uh, one degree like uh, uh, per, per year something like that I, I don't recall exactly the number but I mean in in 2,000 years must be uh, you know uh, make a movement <laughs> you can have all the time in the center right well you right. know that's oh, go ahead Bob. i was gonna say in all fairness the globers are going to come back and say no sir we know that that we know that that change is actually taking place because we can measure a red shift um in the stars uh indicating that there is um some sort of uh parallax right it's like no and and the problem with no. that is is halt and arp you know kind of blew this whole theory away a long time ago um, when he explained how redshift is being completely misused and in fact it's more likely what redshift is is uh, part of a plasma effect and and you know we can go into that later but um, redshift is not what they think it is and they've been terribly misapplying it all this time so again there is no sh there is no evidence of parallax 
period. There is no, no, no there is no evidence of parallax. In fact, uh, yesterday I was at night looking at uh, a guy who make all the, you know, mathematical formulas to, to, to try to explain there is no any parallax. And they finished the video with a really, really simple uh, experiment that you can do, with it, with, which was, he, he says, uh, go outside, look any, look up the sky, uh, pre, pre, you know, uh, focus in any star you want and, uh, you know, close one eye and then close the other. And if you can detect parallax be, with the two eyes, it's because that is really close. And if you go outside and do that, you're going to see that the, the, the you're going to detect, you know, this kind of uh, closed uh, behavior uh, of parallax with your own eyes. Well, and, let me, let me yeah. explain where parallax comes from. Parallax has to start with the model of the ball Earth going around the sun, right? So if you've already assumed that, then because if you don't assume that, then how can you say in six months when the planet is on the other side of the sun, how could you say you're getting a parallax measurement when to be in the same location would be night and day, right? If you're on six months later, if you're in the same location, at this, you would be on Literally. the night side. Right. So that the parallax may just be because they're having to locate themselves on the other side of the planet. Yeah. So, of course, the stars are going to change. You've taken a ball Earth. You've said that the ball Earth is going around the sun, that it's moving some... Uh, you know, half of 538,000 or 538 million. So let's say you're moving some 275 million, for instance, and then you're locating your location from one side of the planet to the other. Then you're measuring the stars, saying there's a change. And of course, you're calling that parallax. But you have to start with the premise that the Earth is a ball moving around the sun. And then, of course, by necessity, you have to have parallax. Otherwise, you're on the same side um, of the Earth, which means you're in the daylight. How would you see stars? Exactly, and the fact that the Milky Way show us that that doesn't happen. I mean, uh, all the time you can see the Milky Way, and uh, if you are six months later on the other side of the sun, pointing against that the first six months, why we see the same Milky Way? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of problems with that, needless to say. <laughs> Here is how the star field would look if we removed the atmosplane. The place is Canary Island, Spain. The lens that I used here has a 122 degree field of view and as you can see the stars never set because they are too high for perspective to make them rise or set. Their altitude now is about 4,000 miles. This number is fairly accurate and matches the rise and set times shown in the program such as Stellarium. Now I am going to play the same video but with the atmosphere or atmos plane added. As you can see, the video has changed completely and the star trails look exactly like the original picture. Here is the original taken on March 15, 2015. Now let's play the two videos side by side so you can see the effect of the atmos plane. We can do this from any location. They all work the same. And here is another test in France. Look at it carefully and compare it with the original and let us know if we're doing anything wrong. What would it look like if you were standing inside a glass ball and he put together this computer simulation of what it would look like and, and if you see on your screen here the little ball on the left with the lines there uh, the red lines got the gray ball this shows your position within the glass ball the one on the right shows what you would see 
and you should see a pattern of a circle to your right and then as you sweep to, toward the left it begins to straighten out uh, and at the farther left you go here in these uh, next two shots you see at the farther left you look you see more and more uh, that you're going toward a circle in the on both sides in, in to your right and to your left now an even more recent video a guy took a glass uh, like a little glass bowl and he held it up against a uh, picture of star trails and he looked through it and, and uh, what did he find well uh, the picture on the right is his photograph that he took through the glass bowl and the other the one on the left is an actual star trail you see the similarities folks when you look through a glass uh, when you look through a glass, it, re, it, it, it warps the image in such a way that it, that's exactly what we see in the sky today. Exactly. So this is absolutely incredible. A genius idea here. Just take a glass ball. What's it look like? You're looking through that thing. It warps it a certain way. Just like you're looking through water. Water warps things uh, when you try to look through it. A glass dome does the exact same thing. Now, um, uh, this answers, this perspective answers a huge portion of our problem. Uh, the idea of perspective, how does that work? And then this, looking, just understanding that we're looking through a glass dome, this uh, answers a huge part of our dilemma. Uh, but um, there's one remaining aspect here to why we can't, why we, why we have trouble with this. Because even these two things there's still a huge gap in our understanding and that is how do we see this same pattern whether we're in Australia New Zealand uh, whether we're in South America South Africa why is it we always see this same circular pattern it's one thing to understand the pattern itself how does the pattern even get there but it's an entirely different problem to, un to try to understand how it is, no matter where you look, uh, you're going to see this same thing. How, how, how does that happen? That's what we're going to explain now. Okay, this, the, the shot that's coming up on your screen now uh, shows three cameras. That's what that is, three cameras. And what uh, what's going on here, and again, I'm linking to the video, so please go and watch it. Uh, this fella takes a curved mirror. He takes a, a flexible mirror and he uh, holds it up to the camera and then he, he curves it and as he curves it what went on a flat surface you, you would just see one camera just to reflect just reflecting back but as he curved it the image actually split into three here and if you can imagine the camera on the left is uh, New Zealand Australia the camera in the middle uh, Africa South Africa and then South America that you see how you see how the image breaks up against a curved surface now uh, due to perspective when we look out on the horizon we're in we're in the south we look on the horizon we see one circle we don't see three like this because the perspective prevents that we cannot see that far uh, we cannot see it in the same way that we can see a little you know 12 inch uh, uh, flexible mirror uh, here reflection off that is a completely different uh, just a completely different scale but essentially this is what's going on uh, no matter where you are as you look out on the horizon against a glass firmament against a glass dome you're gonna see this pattern follow you all the way around no matter where you are that's what you're gonna get and it's due to the fact that a curved image acts in this particular manner this is a camera that i don't remember where is exactly but is uh, um, near to the equator and this is a camera near to uh, the north pole so if you can imagine this kind of distortion uh, in the atmosphere you can see that everything of the movement matches very close to this kind of perspective uh, situation and for me the most maybe complex things to understand it's the local rotation of the southern hemisphere uh, because you know every everyone's uh, maybe see this kind of 
behavior based on these uh, glass properties. But these kind of things show us that there is this, you know, this effect producing uh, in the same location uh, based on the huge perspective, uh, this kind of distortion where you can have uh, things like uh, center point, then these uh, straight lines and then trying to come again into a center point because the perspective is so, so, so huge that the camera behaves in that kind of uh, way. Yeah. Hey, and, uh, Ira, can, yeah. You, can you back up to that Antarctic um, star trail or moon trail with the star trails a little bit? Because I saw something there that I thought was kind of extraordinary. Um, you had the, the one on the equator, one in the north, and then the part where Antarctica uh, was showing going across. And yes. what I saw there was, yeah, just like that. Look at that number three. And that appears to be going straight across the horizon at Antarctica. And yes, that seems to me that, like that is precisely what we would expect to see if we were on a flat Earth and not at all what we would expect to see if we were truly in Antarctica. Shouldn't we have that same spinning circle like we do at, at, at Polaris down there? It's like, that's huge, isn't it? Am I seeing this that, wrong? Or? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. In fact, I have, I, I, I trying to uh, find the, in, in fact, when you, when you are looking based, um, I'm going to pass very quickly, but when you are starting to even look in, in this kind of um, uh, software, um, I think this is Stellarium, uh, you can clearly see um, if you look north, you're going to have this anti-clockwise uh, situation and if you're starting to pull him back and trying to look south, uh, you are going to see the, let me just, you know, you can start to see how here form the, the pattern of the straight line. And if you start looking south, you're going to have uh, the other kind of rotation. But this is based on perspective. It's, it's just, you know, the, the, the huge amount of distances uh, and right. the, you know, the, the layer compact in the atmosphere so uh, we are not e for example just just for 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 dropping you know uh, another element uh, run on the table um, uh, if you if you have this kind of uh, behavior based on refractive properties uh, and I don't see I, I don't I don't say that this is what is happening but we we know that ex exist uh, you know things like the sun ducks uh, the rainbows, the double rainbows. So there is, you know, this kind of behavior in the atmosphere. For example, if I get away uh, to this uh, kind of bubble atmosphere uh, thing, and we have, you know, an object that is going to rotate that from the left to the right, you're going to see it inverted in this kind of a scenario. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jaren, so I just, yeah. Oh, I was just gonna Sorry. say, Jaron kind of showed something like that with his his little magnifying, you know, glass thing, and and the example that you used, Jaron, where uh, you had something that was on the complete opposite side of of, you know, as seen through the magnifying glass or that little glass dome, uh, than what it actually was. So, and, and again, the same thing with the the water filling up you know, or the glass filling up with water, changing the actual direction, the length of the arrows, um, the uh, it, their relative position on the glass, all this stuff is affected, you know, by the lensing effect of the atmosphere itself. Exactly. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really difficult uh, to understand because we are not able to see from outside. So, uh, uh, I mean, it could be, uh, you know, uh, the stars could be. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know if the, the pattern of the star is, uh, you know, like like uh, in the flat plane, all the stars together. I think there are have some kind of depth, but uh, that depth we are losing that depth uh, because we are seeing all the light projecting in the atmosphere layer. So you are losing that kind of depth. Uh, but if you start looking how the moon, the sun, and the stars uh, live that that kind of a star trail behind uh, you can see that they all have a relative uh, speed you know uh, equal relative st speed the only thing that i imagine that uh, the the um, 
the speed at a little different is because for example when you when you see this kind of um, thing you can see the little star trail there and the big ones here so if you base that kind of lines uh, on relay you know you, you base on speed you can maybe determine that the long trails are you know more speed than the uh, little ones uh, but uh, it's for me it's it's a really complex topic the the, the the thing of the of the star because if you are not able to see from outside it's it's gonna be really difficult to to Absolutely. understand but and that is that's I'm, I'm my my thought about that right and and I totally understand it because again it comes back to that nasty perspective thing again um, and just like what P brain was showing uh, with his crepuscular and anti crepuscular rays um, there is a divergence and convergence in them from your particular perspective um, and again this this goes back to the railroad tracks converging as they go away from you and things compressing as they get to the atmosphere all of this I mean to assume that we wouldn't be seeing that very same effect in the sky would be silly because obviously we are and uh, that exactly. that has to explain a lot of what we're seeing but um, you know your, your point is very well taken it makes a lot of sense so, um, okay, so, uh, Chris, let's see, did you have anything else on that or uh, that you wanted to cover, or should we move on to the next little item here? Yeah, I only had one other thing that I wanted to point out. Okay. Go back to screen sharing here. All right. And that was, uh, and I just saw it in... Uh, the video that you mentioned down there at Antarctica. Okay, it. Uh, I saw the same thing in that uh, one that Euro just showed of the moon down in uh, Antarctica. Now you can see in this star trail slash moon trail how it's starting to do a straight line, almost a smiley face, and it's tracking with the stars that are next to it. Now when you go to this one, you got the moon doing a frowny face, tracking the exact same with the stars, which I find fairly odd. And it probably falls back to what he was just talking about in perspective, the perspective that you see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a lot easier to understand perspective when you're dealing with it on a like a vertical basis um, than a, a kind of an arcing basis, because that, that tends to screw with a lot of people's heads. And honestly, that's my problem. You know, I've said this from the beginning, and when it comes to that, I'm a little bit challenged on it, um, and it's very hard for me to visualize a lot of this stuff, and uh, that's why good graphics representations definitely help. <laughs> and then this last thing, this is one that uh, Bo did from uh, California to the south, and he was talking about the doming effect, and you can absolutely see that and these star trails to the south where you get the clockwise and the doming effect as it uh, heads off to the south. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really good right there. And yeah, there is no divergence in them either. There just seems to be an, an arc over the top. Right, and then in the, my video, that's why this is like the southeast. And then I start doing star trails panning across the south where you get the straight ones, and then, or where it's kind of arc, then you get the straight. You can see the doming effect taking place as you pan across the sky doing your star trails. Yep. Starting from the southeast, going down the center, back or headed to the southwest. Yeah, exactly, and that that it's uh, it, that that happened in any place that you look north, you look south, you look west. So it's based on that kind of uh, range of uh, view that any optical device have. Yep, very much. And then the only last thing that I wanted us to uh, talk about was when I did this experiment where. Uh, these, when I got this effect, my, these were uh, in that dome, 
I had to have the camera almost extremely up against the lights, pointing directly straight across the lights to get them to arc and bend like this. So when you start getting that doming effect, as you're looking out to the south, that in my speculation tells me that those stars aren't very far away. Yeah, I would tend to agree with you on that. They, they certainly, they, well, they couldn't be really. Uh, and there's so many little bits of evidence that kind of point that way to me also. Um, not the least of which um, is how they seem to dissipate uh, as the observer goes higher and higher and higher. And uh, even though we weren't able to successfully get them to completely disappear, um, well, on ours, we lost the balloon, but on other people that have done it, um, you do see a very distinct um, decrease in luminosity as that balloon goes higher and higher and higher and and the atmosphere becomes less of a factor um, to the point where um, I believe you know maybe if you get a hundred thousand maybe a little bit over that uh, they're just going to disappear from sight altogether much like what uh, a lot of people are saying is going on with the Sun um, that it cannot be observed in space because um, it requires something to diffuse or diffract that light exactly yep so, uh, you know, it's always been kind of my position that without the atmosphere, you wouldn't be able to see any of these um, energetic uh, manifestations. And I think those energies become manifest from those points of light up in the sky um, that we are seeing and calling the stars. But those points of light, we would never be able to see that energy were it not for the, the energy from them becoming manifest as light. Uh, because of the characteristics of the atmosphere, uh, you know, like possibly the noble gases, you know, uh, becoming uh, illuminated or fluorescing from these points of light going through it. And this, of course, you know, I've stated before is my belief of what's going on with the sun as well. Um, we have a lot of good proof that shows the sky illuminating long before and long after the sun is anywhere in the proximity of them and this again has to do with the electric charge field that's around the sun itself and like again same exact property i believe is going on with the stars as well so well said you're on the sun side of the orbit uh, the sunlight washes out all the starlight so you can't see any stars just like here on earth there's all the there's all the stars there and the cool thing is about it, you can see it during the day yeah you can and there's more than stars you can see planets you can right. see moons you, you see the get the gas uh, magellan clouds of yeah the, of yeah the most unexpected thing i think was um the blackness of space uh, the sky is almost white with with the light of the universe with the uncountable number of stars yeah yeah, yeah. sorry sir doing my best who made that man a gunner i did sir he's my cousin who is he he's an asshole sir i know that What's his name? That is his name, sir. Asshole. Major Asshole. And his cousin? He's an asshole too, sir. Gunner's mate, first class, Philip Asshole. How many assholes we got on this ship, anyhow? Uncountable number of... Go! I knew it. I'm surrounded by assholes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sir? What? what? Are we being too literal? No, you fool. We're following orders. We were told to comb the desert, so we're combing it. Found anything yet? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nothing yet, sir. How about you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not a thing, sir. What about you guys? We ain't found shit. 